Need someone's arms to lead me through the night. I need someone's hands to hold and squeeze me tight. When the night begins, it never ends. That's cause I need that loving. Need a soft voice that could talk to me at night. Don't worry, baby, now we can for some fight. When the night begins, oh, it never ends here. Yeah. That's cause I need that loving so bad. Need somebody's lips to feel next to mine. I need somebody to stand up, girl, and tell me when I'm lying. Yeah, listen to my plea, bring it home to me. That's cause I need that loving so bad. Need your soft voice, keep me company at night. Don't worry, baby, no, we can for some fight. Listen to my plea, bring it home to me. Cause I need that loving so bad. Cause I need that loving so bad now, yeah I need that loving so bad, yeah Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. That was Harry Wallace with Need Your Love So Bad. Um, we've got Harry in today for a quick chat. And uh, how you doing, mate? Yeah, you're not pretty good. I thought that went real smooth. Yeah, real yeah. well, yeah. It was real smooth, mate. Yeah, yeah. I've seen you a couple of times at the open mics and your songs are always spot on. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could get down a bit more rehearsal and practice before turning up. But uh, I think there's something quite nice about just, I don't know, riding the wind. You know what I mean? Like turning up, Absolutely. chucking a guitar. I am, I am terrible at doing any of the vocal warm-ups, getting on and just, I suppose, just bashing it out, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so you you write a lot of your own songs. Do you do mostly your own stuff, or do you do a mixture of covers? Uh, um, how's it, what's the process? So it's yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. So even when I pick a cover, I'm really I'm quite scrutinous with kind of like, you know how I go about it, which ones I listen to, and a lot of the times, I, I won't 
um, it's not normally a song that I think up. I'm not like, oh, I, I want to learn a new song. It's not normally like that. Instead, I just, Spotify suggested is a beautiful thing. And uh, as, <laughs> as songs come in, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, like as songs come in and I've listened to them like seven, eight times in a row, I already have figured out a lot of the lyrics. And then by that point, uh, if I sit there down with a guitar for like five minutes or a piano, you know, um, I can kind of work it out. And so just another one gets added to the repertoire, but I prefer doing originals. Yeah. But any cover that I do ends up sounding, a lot of people are like, wow, is that your own? And I'm like, no, it's actually quite a well-known song. But I, th I think, like I said, more yeah. as we were talking about earlier, things like Billie Jean, you know, you add a bluesy twist to it and then suddenly it sounds nothing like the original song. Yeah. And when people you, hear the lyrics suddenly. When you, know? you started playing that, I had no idea that was going yeah. to Billie Jean. <laughs> like, absolutely not. I'm being honest, neither did I. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, listen, we'll just turn this yeah. into a song. Oh, man. So, so nice. <clears throat> I, I heard through the grapevine, like mm -hmm. when we've been watching you open mics, oh, that dude, he's only been playing guitar a year. I was like, are you yeah. serious, man? <laughs> I bet then I've just seen you play the piano and uh, things are kind of making a yeah. bit more sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the puzzle pieces do kind of slot yeah. together. I think, yeah, it, it is a big, it's a big hand. And anybody out there who's like, you know, playing piano right now or thinking of transitioning or picking up something, piano is now established, you know, for me, I, I've known it for so long, but I now realize that how hard it is compared to other instruments. Now, I'm not saying I'm the best guitar player, you know, certainly not the best guitar player, but after learning piano, guitar was an easy transition. I think oh, yeah. the biggest thing is like on piano, if your left hand is out with your right hand, you're actually playing two different notes. Whereas if your left hand and, and your right hand are out on a guitar, you might have just missed a strum for a second. Right. You know? So it's not as big a blunder. So going from piano and learning that and learning to be quite strict with yourself and yeah. then transitioning to guitar is, in my personal opinion, a bit easier. I wouldn't want to learn guitar first yeah. and then transition to piano I, um, <laughs> I started learning piano um i wanted to i, I just haven't got around to like putting oh, more yeah. time into it Been but there. i did realize when i started learning that like music theory is much easier yeah. to understand as a concept from yeah. a piano's standpoint yeah if that makes sense you're totally right yeah because, well it's because it's just there's not you know on a guitar you can play the same two notes you can really play the same three notes in many different places on it whereas a piano middle c is middle c if you play the c above it it's a different sound Absolutely. and so it's really visual on like you know where you are with it um i find guitars you know i think a lot of people who pick up a guitar and just try yeah and have never played it are going to kind of struggle to get a like a chord you know to to come up with a chord by yourself if you've never played it's going to be hard whereas i think on piano yeah you can kind of suss it out a bit i easier. think reading music as well like actual yeah. notation <laughs> like as a good i've played guitar for years and i've never even attempted to try and read music <laughs> no but no learning piano is a bit of a different thing it, it yeah. kind of all just makes a mm -hmm. lot more sense yeah and i think youtube is a wonder as well you yeah. know if you try following a youtube guide and you have no idea how to read tab on guitar it's actually really hard to figure out where their fingers are sitting whereas on piano it's really obvious you yeah. know and to be to a point where if i see somebody you know i've seen people busking with piano and you know maybe there's a piano in a train station or something if i see somebody playing it's easy enough for me to literally go up look and be like oh they're playing an e and just jump in straight away because it's that visual whereas yeah. guitar is a uh, a conundrum even to me still so i don't <laughs> really know what's going on so when you when, did you, when you wrote songs before did mm -hmm. you, have you always written or is this like cause yeah. you mentioned you you didn't even used to sing or something that, yeah. that's insane to me well yeah it was like you're saying you know really till about a year and a half it's probably two years now i when i picked up the guitar was really the first time when i actually started to sing at all um mm. obviously in you know in my own privacy i'd try and belt out some uh, Tina Turner or whatever, you know, with a piano, it never went down well. Um, but uh, but with a guitar, you can, um, it, it's, it's just a bit of a weird story really, because piano to me, when I was learning it, it's very vocal in itself. You know, I can play the rhythm and I can play the melody at the same time. I can do the whole vocal line. Whereas a guitar, it's a bit harder because it's yeah. hard to play a chord and simultaneously do a like a riff over the top of it. That's why obviously yeah. a lot of bands have two guitar players. But piano, I always found that I was always better at piano than I was at singing. Even if my singing was good, I was always better at piano because I've been playing it a bit longer. So I always yeah. thought, there's no need to ruin this with a voice. I'll just let the piano do the talking. And weirdly, it got me a lot better at piano. But as soon as I picked up the guitar, it's not really the yeah. same thing. I had to learn bloody quickly yeah. what I was doing. Was that a decision you consciously made or did you sort of fall into becoming a guitar player? Mm. Or so, like how? It's, it's a bit of a weird one. Um, right. So I moved, uh, I moved out of a house and into a van. 
and I found it very hard to suddenly plug a keyboard in, get any time with it. It's, you know, it's a big bit of equipment as well, you know, full length keyboard and it's a Yamaha and you need 240, you know, mains power and stuff like that. Whereas an acoustic guitar, I mean, that's the wonder of it, you know, I yeah. see every Off Tom, Dick and Harry on a beach carrying one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's easy. And so I picked up, um, I was working in Torrington. I went to the Torrington Pannier Market and they were selling guitars. I bought their cheapest one, which I later found out was a child's guitar, not a three quart guitar, even smaller than that. Now, anybody who's watching this probably doesn't know I'm 6'4". So it was yeah. a bit of a gimmick because it, it was looked just a bit bigger than a ukulele. Yeah, yeah. So it was a bit stupid looking. Um, and I learned to play on that. And that, that mm. was just kind of during the lockdown period. And then because of that, I, it's just because I wanted, I needed a music, I really needed a musical outlet. Mm. And so I picked up a guitar and you know, that's just the end, felt really right. the end of the story, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It felt right. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of transitioned. And now, weirdly, that's what people know me for. Yeah. It's very odd. That's great, yeah. So I first came across you at the Pig on the Beach uh, yeah. event. And yes. um, yeah, I was really impressed, man. It was, it was Code pretty, one. That was quite nice. Winning it a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that very nice. It, yeah. Yeah. No, it was a really great thing. And then I've seen you a few times at other open mics. Yeah. And I've seen you on Barnstable High Street on more than one occasion. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, open open mics to me are the bread and butter of what, of what I truly enjoy about yeah. music. You know, especially when you go to an open mic. Even when I've travelled around England a bit, I'd, it's really a point for me. I'm like, you know, on a Friday by the end of the week, I need to find an open mic. There is something about walking into a place, not knowing anybody there, and just some random person walks up, and they just wow you with something. You know, but and yeah. I've been to Hey on Why uh, with my girlfriend and. There was, a, there was a guy who got up and did poetry. There was somebody who, like, read uh, pages out of some old history book wow. that he thought was hilarious. And then there was this girl who just apps. You know, you think, like, this is a, such a great place for all this kind of, like, level of creativity. I, th I feel like if, if there's a musician out there who doesn't go to open mics regularly and be that once a month, yeah. you need to, man. It's great to I see the type, of, I agree. type I, of stuff there. I, hear, I keep hearing good things about the open mic at the Grand Yeah, so... <laughs> Everybody keeps talking about this. Near and dear to my heart. Um, right. This is, uh, without a fail, it's a Friday today, and yeah. I will be going there after yeah. this, 100%. Um, in my humble opinion, it is probably one of the best pubs I've ever been to. Really? And uh, the staff are lovely. The beer and the ale and the cider, if you're from North Devon or Devon or even the Southwest, that's a big, that's a tall tale. You yeah. know, you gotta, you, that's your, you got to nail that. you got to have good beer, good ales. And the open mic is like nothing I've ever seen. It is, is it really. The, it's just the 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 virtuoso of the people in there and the uh, the music out. It's unbelievable. It's unparalleled to me. I've never been to a place where week after week, um, and that's not just because <coughs> I'm going every single week giving it <laughs> a rock or, but uh, but there is some incredible musicians. The in-house band are called Malarkey, and that's right. a shout out to them because I love them. Though. Yeah, I bought their CD and it was great. Um, yeah. But uh, they, it's, you know, you're talking old boys in a corner been playing for 40, 50 years in some cases, so they know yeah. what they're doing and they, they're very welcoming with jamming. Oh, you've only been playing drums for a year. Doesn't matter. You know, just give us a bass and a tom and a something, and we'll figure something out. And they're really welcoming then. Very welcoming. Yeah. Every caliber, but it seems that the caliber is bloody high yeah. every time I go there. Myself and Matt, we're way. gonna go down, I think, and sort of introduce You'll ourselves. You'll see me there. You'll, <laughs> You'll see me there. I'll get, I'll get yeah. you fine. It'll be good fine. to sort of uh, meet some other musicians as well, sort yeah. of out of the immediate area. Well, it's one of well. the it's one of the places where I found a lot of the current musicians in right. the musical circle that I'm in. Martin yeah. Barnes, who was on the channel, as well as Alex, yeah. and uh, shout mm -hmm. out to them as well. I mean, cracking musicians. If you want to see them uh, with. Uh, without paying a fee, I suppose, yeah. if you wanted to. They're at an open mic most Fridays, yeah. um, including yeah, yeah. a lot of people of a very similar and high caliber. You know, people like Georgia Palmer and some of my mates go there, and it's just... Yeah, I've seen Georgia. She When we did the Latitude open mic, she came... Yeah. She, what's her, she's, it's her and her friend. Yes, what's I'm her? so sorry. I've forgotten her name. Laura? I think it's Lauren, maybe? I think so, yeah. But yeah. they are incredible. And yeah, it's yeah. just it just... If it makes me happy to know as a musician that other musicians who normally you're you know the time you'd have to pay for, they're just turning up to a bar, having a couple pints, you know, yeah. and then just yeah, yeah. get on a stage, have a couple of songs. It's a laugh, you know. People are stamping on the floor and clapping because some of it's like lively and folk music and sea shanty ish. Um, so it's a good place to be. And if you've got a pint in your hand, you'll have half on the floor from just slamming it on a table yeah. and just getting in the mood. You I know? think um, people think, oh, <clears throat> a bloody open mic. But if you have an open mic on a busy night, oh my god, they can be yeah. such good nights. Yeah, it's like, free amazing. music for about five or six yeah. hours in some cases. And nobody's you know? there because oh, I'm here because you know they're, they're, yeah. everybody's there because they just love mm. it. I think the thing that's always surprised me is obviously I see repeat faces all the time yeah. as I go there. But it's when 
somebody from you know Newcastle's come down on holiday because you know Southwest everyone wants to come in really uh, it's cheap holiday too but when I when that person comes in and you can see their friends kind of like nudging them it's like no go on sing a song and they sing a song and yeah. you just think like that was unbelievable like the the just the quality of some of that stuff and they get off and they're kind of shy and like, I haven't done this in a couple of years yeah and that's it it becomes a memory then because you'll never see him you know that's that's it and it's just you think like whoa yeah. i wish i wasn't so hammered so i could have enjoyed that a bit more but that's <laughs> what it is you know uh, the, the location of that is it in lee bay yeah it's in yeah it's in so lee people bay. on holiday absolutely it's yeah it's an absolute yeah. prime spot you know woolacoom kind of area yeah. a lot of people will know that it's yeah Amazing. so if anybody's going to woolacoom who's watching this head to lee bay on a friday you will not be disappointed yeah. i think it's i think yeah we're going to shoot down there in the next sort of week or two and it's brilliant and, yeah it's brilliant. very long running as well isn't it i can remember growing up yeah. That was like 30 years ago. Has it been going it's, that it's long? Stood the test wow. Of time. Yeah, they've, I mean, the guy who runs it, Mark, um, I mean, I, I love the guy. He's very generous. Any, once again, well, that's what I mean, so welcoming, you know, any caliber. Somebody can come up. A lot of people, you know, um, like myself when I started, maybe maybe they just play piano and they want some accompaniment, or maybe they just sing. You know, there's a lot of, there's um, uh, there's a girl I played with a, a while ago. I can't, can't for the life of me remember her name, but she was looking for somebody to play with. And Mark's always like, oh, can anybody join in? And yeah. obviously in a room full of bloody good musicians, someone's like, oh yeah, I know this. I know Tracy Chapman and that's it. And then this person gets the limelight and it's so welcoming. And you are right. They have been doing it for ages. You can see these people are uh. accomplished that just, yeah. Mark, who runs it, is an absolute top lad. Wow. <laughs> Cracking fella. So uh, before what you're doing now then, you're obviously an accomplished pianist. Yeah. So um, you've been in your, your previous band, what was the Scattertones? Yeah, it was the Scattertones for a yeah. while, actually, yeah. Um, it was a shame, really, because I was based down here, you know, it was, yeah. and that was kind of all I did for the longest time was be part of Scattertones and every other week you know kind of like turning up to practice and uh, anybody who's in a band out there will know that every time you add a new member it gets exponentially harder to get everybody in the same room yeah and i think at one point there was about eight or nine of us so it was getting oh, wow. hard you know like half the brass side could turn up maybe the drummer needed a lift and drummers <laughs> are uh, they need a bus for all their gear so it's a hard you know it's a hard thing to kind of keep going and then i moved up to cheltenham and uh, that was pretty, unfortunately, that's kind of where the story ended. I came down for a couple of gigs. I did a bit of session work on a couple of tracks, but I was with them for a good seven years. And wow. unfortunately, I missed some big gigs as well because, you know, they later played Boomtown and stuff like yeah. that. And I wish I stayed with them. But Are they still? They're still they're around, still I, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I have been thinking of, um, I mean, I've you know, I'm good friends with Robbie Horrell, who was the lead singer. I think it might be taken over by somebody else now. But it is hard to get back into bands. When you're yeah. doing your own stuff and you have, you know, it's really hard to be in the same place as somebody who has the spotlight like a front man and you've got your own songs that you want to get out but it, maybe it doesn't fit the vibe because obviously they were a reggae band and my stuff isn't particularly reggae it's a bit more kind of like right. hoarse and blues and a bit gritty so it doesn't yeah. always work so i couldn't really use it as an outlet for that stuff but yeah i did that and then um scattertones was good but uh just before that i was in a great band called the kind and uh it was me the lead singer scattertones funny enough right. and we wanted to try something just a little bit different so we went for I suppose jazz might be the word, you know, kind of like bossa nova -y cafe stuff. And we mm -hmm. thought, you know, maybe we get a couple of gigs. And even though really that band only lasted about a year, you know, it was one of those like, oh, it's hard to get everybody together and we're all in other bands. So we just kind yeah. of created this super band of just four of us who we kind of classically thought we were the best of the nice bunch. Nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not being modest. Trimming the fat. Yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> to a degree. Um, and, uh, you know, props to uh, Ollie and Will Benson. They are unbelievable. And they're still doing music to this day. And they are yeah. phenomenal musicians. I mean, they were back then, you know, we're going back yeah. 10, 11 years now, yeah. probably even longer. And they were unbelievable musicians then. Ollie Benson finished his music degree and still doing right. it now. And Will, I think, lives in Bristol. But they're like jazz yeah. guitar, you know, a voice that to me still has been unparalleled. I, he's wow. probably one of the best singers I know. And yeah, I haven't heard his voice in about 10 years. Wow. And I would still class him as probably one of the best singers I know. But that jazz band was so nice to do something, you know, ska, reggae, very upbeat, very lively. Everybody's moving. Yeah. And from doing that on a weekend and then the following weekend to go to small little cafe on a corner by the beach and just play some, you know, a little bit of Marvin Gaye or something, yeah. you know, it's a very nice vibe and you yeah. can, 
I kind of get why people are in jazz bands now. It's very chilled a lot of the time. Unless you want to do jazz fusion, then yeah. just chuck all that out of the window, some of the thing in it. But. So do you have any sort of band aspirations moving forward as a guitar mm. player or a vocalist? Uh, yeah, 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 actually. I mean, I'm not cracking a guitar. I'd give it a bit of a whale. Mate, but you've got a great set of pipes. <laughs> Thank you. For <laughs> no, I mean, um, yeah, I'm a bit of a sucker for a, a male rock vocal, but blues yeah. vocals do sort of encroach on that territory and yeah. it, was, uh, it sounded good man it's kind of um it crept up on me i think yeah. weirdly maybe maybe other musicians haven't found this but it took me a long time to find that kind of voice I, yeah. d I thought it would come naturally i thought i would just start singing and enjoy how i sounded but weirdly that wasn't the case it took me quite a while to be like there's surely there's a brand of music that fits this voice better and luckily i grew up with people yeah. like muddy waters and yeah. all that kind of stuff um and so i kind of like lent into that and now i listen and watch you know rock yeah. and metal and like blues almost you know explicitly that's really all i watch um and so yeah i wouldn't mind being in a band to be honest to kind of circle back yeah nice. I, like you know a bit heavier on the drums and a bit more chuggy yeah. on the guitar and i wouldn't mind it means i can dig into my vocal and destroy my throat hey, a bit if more. you want to go down <laughs> that road man uh, yeah we, yeah we well, there's a thousand people you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i wouldn't yeah. mind that maybe the people well, might like it <laughs> yeah yeah i've been trying to get a vocalist for my metal band for god knows how long it's oh. been an uphill battle yeah like, that's a struggle it is a struggle yeah. but um yeah. we'll talk <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah south devon's not the best place yeah. for metal is it do you know what man uh so we had um do you know nathan james no, I don't. Do no, know? so he he was uh, in the band Inglorious. Yes, right. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, uh, long story short, I, I had no idea who they were, and we had a session on in here, and they said, "Oh, our mate's coming, and his name's Nathan." I was like, "Okay, no worries." Yeah. Turns out it was this Nathan James dude. And right. I was like, okay. Oh, you're a rock singer, are you, mate? Oh yeah, you want to come and be in my band? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like. I don't you know who that is? Like, like, I've got no clue whatsoever. Yeah. And I googled it later. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so, Ooh, yeah. Drop yourself in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, I've done similar stuff. Obviously, there's <laughs> quite a lot of famous musicians around it, or but up and coming. And yeah. I remember the first time meeting Yazzie, who you oh, might yeah. even get in there. She, she, came, she came to the open mic uh, last week. That was or it. Last yeah, Sunday, yeah. yeah. And she's done incredible things, you know. Right. And she's quite a well-known name. And uh, yeah, Peter's same people like Sam Dowden. Yeah. And, uh, it makes me laugh when I'm introduced to these people and I'm like, oh, do you play often? And I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, no, yeah. she's played at Glastonbury. And I'm like, yeah. oh, right, yeah, yeah, I'm the rookie in this yeah, situation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How long have you been playing yeah. guitar for? And I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Just hide well, away, it's mate, terrible. Going back to your vocals, it doesn't, it seems like you've been doing it forever. Like, yeah. it's not just, a, you seem to have refined a, a style for yourself mm. um, that's very natural. And there's like, you know, to quote a, a cliche, there's a lot of feeling that goes into what you do, and it comes across yeah. really well, man. Well, I, weirdly, I think that might have been the case when I was writing originals. And right. so I was trying to find my own voice. And uh, there's a great saying, which is, um, uh, do different, not better. And so rather than trying to replicate something, you know, and there are great artists out there. There are people who sound exactly like Adele doing Adele songs. And this is wonderful. If you found your niche, that's fine. But I found that for all these artists that I like, like I was saying earlier with Billie Jean, for all these other ones, and I, and I kept trying to do something similar. Obviously, no one sounds like MJ, but I was trying to, like, how do I fill the boots of that vocal but do it in a kind of separate style? And then when I started writing my originals, the voice just kind of came with it, and I realized I'm just, I'm, I shouldn't try to replicate other people. That's the wrong way to go down it. I'm trying to find my voice in what other people have done, where realistically I should have just sat with a guitar or a piano and just chuck you know really yeah. just work through it get out a song and then be like oh this is how the work the vocals work and so when you're talking about um things that have feeling i think that's probably why it comes across is because it's my own songs and i feel for my own songs mm -hmm. and i'm you know i'm trying to put across what i want to say like any musician or any person wants to do yeah um it probably feels you know that's why it's got that much feel because that's that's where my voice came from that's where that sound came yeah. from i'm saying great. it like i'm a prodigy i'm just yeah. a guy with a guitar no, no. But, you know well, what i mean the thing, like, i mean <laughs> Look at people like uh, like Lemmy, for example, yeah. who's not particularly got a great voice, but he's carved no. out something Absolutely, for him. Yeah. I mean, you, you happen to have a great voice as well, but that mindset yeah, of I not think... trying to replicate something, mm. but putting your own spin on it. Um, absolutely. I think, yeah. yeah, absolutely works really well. Well, I think, it's, I think as soon as I've kind of got grasped that idea a bit better, um, mm. 
it was when I started looking at covers as not just like an arduous process of learning lyrics and learning chords. Yeah. It was more like a, oh, this will be a fun vocal line. Maybe I'll add this chord here instead yeah. because it fits the narrative of my type of songwriting. And so it feels like some, and even in some cases, I've written songs where I don't have lyrics and then I'll listen to something that sounds the same but is in a totally different genre. At one point, I was doing a cover of Call Me Maybe. Um, yes, I know, I know. I didn't play it today and no one will luckily ever hear that. But I was playing a, a song called Delta Getaway and they right. sound very very similar and I was I was realizing that like songs I was writing were sounding like the songs I was also covering and so I'd written songs no lyrics and then just transferred a whole other song and put it on top of it that was already been written and now it's a cover rather yeah. than you know and totally oh, wow. different chords the Billy yeah. Jean one is nowhere near the same chords yeah. and so yeah I, yeah, I, say, I was not it? expecting that <laughs> yeah I know, it's a bit of an odd one isn't it <laughs> yeah. hey brilliant hey so uh What's the future plans for, for Harry Wallace then? Where, where's Harry Wallace in five years? Ooh, uh, Lanzarote, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell, well, the real plan is um, uh, I have... Sorry, I'm saying um and oh, as again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what I was trying to do was I have a van and I like travelling. And I've toured with a couple bands, as well as sold merchandise for them and been on a lot of road trips. And I've seen how profitable it can be and how realistic it can be as a proper way of making money and going through the world. Unfortunately, the world runs on money and we need it. And it's a bit yeah. of a ball ache, but it is what it is. And so the goal was really to take a guitar like any strapping young traveler would and just go across the country and just play some music and see what I can do. Now I busk often and I've realized that it's actually quite a lucrative thing despite it looking like a homeless people thing. Yeah. Um, it can be a very lucrative and profitable kind of like, you know, enterprise. Yeah. So I've realized that I would like to tour a lot more. And I think touring is also good because there are certain countries that really have a passion for music. You know, England certainly does. And yeah. it's one of the seats of great music in the world, really. But places like Germany, are on, you know, they have a rock fest, you yeah. know, and a blues fest. And so do America. And so it's like if you can touch audiences around the world and if one person tells two friends, tells three friends, and suddenly you're getting invited back. And I've seen this multiple times when I've toured with people. So preferably in five years, I've kind of worked out a small tour and doing loops because I live in and out of a van right now and I could quite comfortably permanently live in one. So I wouldn't mind traveling and just constantly doing music and getting gigs and kind of getting a bigger yeah. and a much wider variety of people like in the music in completely different countries speaking different Have languages. Have you uh, bashed across Europe then? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little bit. Nice. Um, what so are the uh, <clears throat> like, rules and regulations? Um, are there or do we not um, worry about that you know what it was in a foreign language and i can't read it <laughs> yeah, so yeah. i just mm, the, this is the beautiful thing about music is yeah. it's universal so i think as soon as i sat down and started playing and chucked the case in front of me it's yeah. very obvious what's going on yeah um and i was never really asked to move along and even if people don't know the lyrics people can enjoy it anyway you know there's a lot of songs that aren't english that are absolutely wonderful there's that really old no regret rian there's enough you know and it's things like that and it's like i don't understand a word that she's saying but it sounds nice and it sounds lovely and so like music you know you chuck it, it reaches hopefully, out. yeah someone yeah. chucks a coin in a case and that pays for fuel and food isn't it so <laughs> it's easy peasy um yeah that's that's the dream anyway to do something so like um have you got, did you grow up in the Barnstable North Devon area. Yeah, you yeah, did, yeah. Yeah, I and grew up in um, Biddyford. Okay. Uh, and uh, well, originally born in Clovelly, would you believe? Uh, you don't have the twang. No, uh, are you no? Is that something you've worked on, or is that <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe worked against? Yeah. yeah. Um, my brother, uh, he, uh, Billy, he works in a or worked in a garage, and I think he was surrounded by a lot of old boys farmers, like, and uh, <laughs> he's it is. It is built in. There's no, you know, you can chisel it out at this point. It is, it's in the throat. I've realized that it comes out, my accent comes out when I say doors, ors, bores, and gores. Anything with an or sound, uh, that's that's where it comes Mine out. Mine gets uh, exponentially worse when I've had a drink. <laughs> yeah, so much worse. <laughs> You're right, bye, my, see you later. My, my partner, she's from Lewisham, and uh, when she's had a few, oh, yeah. she's been here a couple of years now, and uh, I've, out, I've yeah. busted her out a few times. <laughs> it is great. It makes me feel at home. Yeah. If I hear it, I'm always like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's still kicking round you know it's yeah. really really nice um funny enough there's an old cornish sea shanty um that's called uh i think it's called my eden but it's cornwall forever my home and there's a line in it where it says um she sounds the same as me and he's talking about his daughter and i think that's quite funny because the accent is really noticeable you know yeah. just the southwest cornwall slightly different to devon uh, i don't want to start a feud in the 
comments are all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't, don't want to. <laughs> scone, yeah, scones. Yeah, no, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> if only there was an emoji for the Devon and yeah, Cornwall flag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be going crazy. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I am born and raised around here. Okay. Um, I moved to Insto, if that has anything to do with my accent. My sister would tell you no. that it would. Right. She was like, oh, posh boy goes to posh school. Oh, it's nothing okay. really that posh around yeah. me. You know, I still roll around in the dirt and I don't mind getting mucky for stuff. But yeah, the accent's gone. But I am around here. Moved up to Cheltenham and then came back down. And it, I tell you what, it, when you move away, mm. Cheltenham is beautiful. You know, nothing wrong with the place. And a lot of Europe is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. There is something about this area that is kind yeah. of weird and special. And that's not just the Grampus at Lee Bay. No. <laughs> but, no. <laughs> however unique that may be. You know be. what? Um, I keep, I've said it a few times now. Like, at this present time mm. um, in the area, as far as music goes, there's like something is going on. There's a lot of yeah. really great bands. There's a lot of great artists. Absolutely. And I mean, I don't know if they've always been here and we're just sort of, they're really? just sort of surfacing now, but... Well, it feels like it, doesn't it? It, it feels does like, feel like the more it. little festivals and beer festivals mm -hmm. and, you know, all that kind of stuff, the more you kind of see these, and a lot of them are young, you know? Yeah, a lot of them are absolutely. only like 16, 17, 18. Maybe there's, you know, I uh, tip my hat to uh, Petrock. Yeah. Um, certainly when I was there, there was a great bunch of people and they're really good at promoting you to get out there, do music, you know, and uh, I mean, to be honest, it changed my life, uh, you know, to quite a significant way. And uh, I'm pretty sure he's already had props on here. Leroy uh, up at Petrock. Oh, Alex meant about re <coughs> mentioned Le yeah. Leroy, Tom. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Leroy is a legend. Right. Um, there was a John Mayo work there uh, and there was a John Bangham as well. Oh, and Tony John. who ran it. Now, John yeah. Bangham, he is uh, my uh, man crush. I love the man. Um, he's <laughs> unbelievable at keyboard. The, I is. can put all my um, quality and any, any of my expertise down to him teaching me how wow. to play keys correctly. He was wow. one of those people who just told you to sit with it and listen to it rather than you know, don't worry about the notes Just yeah. does it sound right? That was the yeah. main thing is it does it sound right to you? Who cares what anybody else thinks and yeah. I think music is a lot about that But those guys up there they are pushing some great musicians out and um, God if you hang around long enough and you go to a you know any cider fest or beer fest yeah. or even just down You know go to a park on a day you'll hear somebody making some music. It's a lot of yeah. around here You know, I mean, oh, absolutely. I think Ed Sheeran came from Exeter didn't he or something like that and I yeah, Ellie Golden's that, played yeah. at Ocean Fest. And, right. You know, there's, there's a good lot of stuff around here, really. Isn't yeah. There? <laughs> Wait, when I started, <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Um, Newton Faulkner Newton did Faulkner. as well. Yeah, he's bloody good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is good. <laughs> That's the dream, isn't it? <laughs> Just ginger and dreadlocks, and then I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was good. It's, so the, this is a good music hub, yeah. and I think. Maybe it's down to the fact that the Southwest ain't got a lot going on. No. A lot, you know, it's not a city. You can't just go off to five guys and do whatever you want. No. Instead, you go to the beach with your mates and somebody pulls up a guitar and then suddenly you realise yeah. you're surrounded by a lot of yeah. musical people or creative well, people. You know? When we started on track, I was like, I knew there's good musicians and bands in the area, mm. but I wasn't quite aware of just how many and how good yeah. that they are. Yeah, so, it's um, really surprising. It was a pleasant it? surprise for me. And it feels like they're in pockets as well. Yeah. Like, you know, Biddyford, Barnstable, one area, and then you go to Woolacoom, yeah. a and a totally different sound a lot of the yeah, time. It's very yeah. weird. And these are only yeah. like five, six miles apart, and you think like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Maybe it's like this across the world, but we're just in our tiny little corner of it, and uh, we like keeping it sacred a little bit. Yeah. But there are some good musicians around here. And I feel like it's a good creative place to like you know yeah grow up in i spent a lot of my time in forests i still do now walking along the beach and all that yeah. kind of stuff there's a lot of nature so it's easy to get inspired you know really easy to get inspired although zero of my songs have anything to do about it other than traveling man because right. guess what i'm a traveling Tell man, man. So. <laughs> i suppose like just that alone like you can pick up a lot of inspiration just by the sheer yeah. amount of the different experiences you have yeah um you know, the, the gypsy lady, do we want to talk about her? Well, I, I don't mind talking about it, yeah, yeah. Um, for anybody who's waiting for that song to come out now. Um, yeah, gypsy lady is one of those things. I don't think it's a specific person. To me, right. it's never been one specific person. Okay. But there have been some pretty incredible women that I've met in my life. Yeah. And uh, this amalgamation of all the best elements of it was yeah. kind of one of these people who keep nice. you on your toes and keep yeah. your wits about you. In the Brilliant. bedroom, um, but the rest of it, <laughs> you know, just no, just generally, I think you know, yeah. there's a lot, um, there's a lot in human nature that you can write about in a song. And I feel like Gypsy Lady is one of those ones where it's when something is just a, feels a bit, I don't know, mystical, magical. Yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't, you're kind of unsure, and I think unsurety is all right in those situations. So that's kind of what that song is supposed to be about. <laughs> Won't delve any more into it, so you know. <laughs> and tell me about, um, so I mean, you must get sick of this. Uh, I've said earlier, your, your hit. 
The bite. The bite. Everybody yeah. says, "Oh, go and play the bite." Every gig I've been to where you play played, the bite, everyone says, "Play the bite." Yeah. <laughs> it is one of my favourite songs. It was. Yeah. A, I tell you what, it was a hard song as well. It was yeah. a really hard song to write in a couple ways. It's about right. a touchy subject, but sure. you know, well, I don't mind talking about it. Um, but it was kind of you know about bad breakups, and Lord knows every songwriter's written what, fucking fifty of them. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> so you know that was my one for the time being, um, or at least one that I'm happy to show people. Um, you know, I think a lot of musicians should also write songs just for themselves. You don't have to show the public. You just It's just a thing, you know, that you can kind of, like a journal or a diary, I suppose. But The Bite is one of those ones where it felt like maybe people know about it and pe people have felt that emotion. Yeah. Maybe, a, I know the word's thrown about a bit, but like a narcissistic kind of toxic relationship. And like I said, those words are thrown about and uh, I'm sure a lot of the populace have been in a relationship, whether it be with a a partner or parents or friends or something like that. That's yeah. kind of what that's supposed to be about, where it's like a bittersweet thing. So like the bite, it's as if something has bitten you, mm -hmm. like venomous and stuff like that, but you know, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and it's kind of draining you slowly without you knowing. Um, yeah. And it's the bit, th there's a big buildup in the song where it's kind of like where you turn around and you say no anymore. And uh, that's what that song's supposed to be about. It must be nice, you know, knowing that you've actually sort of reached to so many people because they can relate to it yeah so they're asking you about it they, it's obviously struck a it's chord weird. isn't it with, it's, with, it's with weird people. when it's the first time like yeah. a lot of my songs are just i don't know angsty teenage boy stuff you know that's what it feels like anyway and people are like wow that's a good song what's it about and i'm like oh i don't know you know cars you know mm. <laughs> like i don't really know what i write songs about i just have a feeling and i'm like how do i get this out and then mm -hmm. i pick a nice chord and just keep, keep playing but the bite is one of those ones where a lot of people have been like you know what, that song's pretty good and there's a good friend of ours darren mm -hmm. um he was like wow that song is actually you know it's the first time someone's like that's well written rather than that's a good song to have a specific compliment where he's like those lines are really good and i was like i that's weird because as a musician i also feel that you know we're all very judgmental of our songs and every now and again you think you've made something good and then when somebody says you know what that sounds really good and it makes sense mm -hmm. and it's a it's a hard listen for when it you can see it affecting some people sometimes like in crowds you can see people who listen to the lyrics a bit more yeah. intently yeah. and then afterwards you can see them waiting because they want to talk to you and then they're like <laughs> you know what that song was really good but when somebody tells you when it's well written you're yeah. like you know what that is it's a really nice compliment yeah. to have and Darren's <laughs> a great singer as well unbelievable singer yeah so, so to yeah. get it from him I was yeah, like yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> I was like very shy <laughs> suddenly absolutely you know? So when you're writing songs like that, um, mm -hmm. does your piano background come into it or do, do you approach guitar in a completely different way? Weirdly, um, I think piano helps drastically yeah. because I know how things are supposed to sound. I know what a um, minor and a you know a dominant seventh and a, all these diminished chords and stuff like that. So I know what I'm looking for. I know the sound that I'm looking for. The biggest problem is how the bloody hell do I play it? And so I try never to use Google in those situations. Yeah. And like teachings from John Bangham, does it sound right? So instead I'll play something and be like, that sounds right. And the bite is one of those weirdly where I just sat with it and I was like, I don't want this to be an E or A, the easy, you know, open string the stuff. I, was like, I want this to be in like G minor and C minor with a D dominant seventh from some weird diminishes in it and how do I play that and so I know where G is didn't know how to play a G minor and so I was playing it and I was like that sounds wrong I put my pinky there and I was like that is a G7 maybe and so the but I'm looking at it the weirdest thing is I'm playing it and I'm seeing it in my head on the piano so the piano is really helping because when I'm hearing that and I'm like that note is that note there on the piano it yeah. needs to go up too so I'd go up too and I yeah. can hear that so the piano has helped massively so if anything I write in piano do you know what playing guitar. I think it sort of helps give I mean, now you're saying that, it makes a lot of sense because yeah, it's weird, isn't it? you, you're coming at it at an angle that most guitar players won't come at it. Yeah. At that particular chord you're talking about, the G minor there. Yeah. Um, it's it's not one. a guitar friendly chord. No, it's not. I know. <laughs> <Do you> know <laughs> I know. I, mean? I realized this and when it, I played it. I was like, this was a no, dumb idea. And there's but. several iterations that you can do on the guitar, mm. and th they all work differently mm. in different situations. Yeah. But where it sounds just great on the piano. Mm. The, the guitar, not so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tell you what, the weirdest thing is, is if you try and play that on piano, it doesn't sound anywhere near as good. Really? That's the oddest thing about it. Yeah, it's just yeah. because all the notes are too clumped together on the piano, so it sounds too muddy. Right. Whereas on a guitar, you have this like big spacing, and obviously there's a timbre to it that you don't get with a piano. And so I've tried transposing it over to piano, and even it though I wrote it work. in my head in piano, yeah. um, instead playing guitar, I was like, it yeah. just suits this way better. It suits wow. it so much better. I really love um, when you get guitar. Uh, guitar players that transcribe 
um, pieces of music that were written mm. on piano. Like, say, for example, um, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. Yeah, if wow. If you play that on the guitar, yeah. it's really interesting. Yeah, any of that those stuff, chords, yeah. Well, there's people who play... Um, that really famous classical piece, that Claire Debussy by Claire de Lune. Oh. Goes, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. That one, people have played that on guitar. Yeah. And I think that's... Sounds great. Yeah, mate, you've put some difficult work but it sounds in. Great. Like, yeah. yeah, that is tough. Like To get yeah. all the sounds right as well, you know. But when you hear the slides and the, you hear their fingers go up and down the strings a bit and you get that slight scratch sound, it's like, yeah. you know, what, that is that was worth yeah. transcribing it to a guitar. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> it's weird, the little bits, the little flavours. Cool. So do you have any uh, gigs coming up that we want people to be aware of? Ooh. Or is there anything on the calendar that we should know about? Mm, I tell you what, well, I mean, the summer's coming up. So if mm -hmm. you're in the area, you're going to see, you are going to see me. I'm sorry, okay. you have no choice. Yeah, you're yeah. going to see me on a high street down yeah. Westwood Ho yeah. in your back garden. You're always someone's welcome. Someone's wedding. Yeah. <laughs> you're always welcome at the Junction 27 open Thank mic. Thank you very much. Great open mic. Anybody yeah. out there who's looking for a good one who's maybe watching yeah. this, you know, as a bypass, Junction yeah. 27, what a setup, man. Yeah. You guys got it nailed there. We are building uh what's going to hopefully be going to be a really good open mic well yeah. thank you and um thanks for watching guys and um if you can like and subscribe and follow and all that good stuff uh it really helps us out also um if you're interested in doing an on-track session contact me or matt and we'll get you sorted take it easy take it easy guys <laughs>